Have you ever been hurt by people who claimed that they were followers of Christ and instead of them, you know, following Christ, which is supposed to be a gospel of love, you experience perhaps shaming, shunning, uh, at times physical abuse and other kinds of abuse? And in my case... I'm doing a podcast called The Truth That Heals, and I'm trying to share my story, share my experience of being shamed, of being humiliated, of being neglected, of being punished repeatedly. And what happened was, in my mind and in my heart, I was struggling because, you know, first of all, I didn't want to be there. I wanted to leave already for so long. But I couldn't because it's it's this cult environment that I was living in. And I wanted to escape, but then there's this guilt and this fear that if I leave them, if I leave this community, that I'm going to be going against Christ and that I'll be allowing evil spirits to, you know, you know, condemn me and all of these negative things and paranoia. And the thing is, you know, today I'm still a practicing Catholic. However, my faith journey, my not only my faith journey, but, you know, as a person uh, living in, in the world now and, uh, you know, socializing and going to work and starting my life from zero. Because, you know, when I was, when I was there and I experienced so much humiliation and so much... Uh, gaslighting I came home not understanding who I was and so I had to regain my identity identity understand who I was but it was so hard and so difficult and so that's why I'm doing this podcast you know because I want people to know especially Christians Catholics whatever or even in other places I want people to know how painful shaming can be, how painful that us versus them mentality can be, which is very cultish. And in this quick episode, I wanted to kind of break down on how that that mentality of shaming people, especially when they're down, is definitely not Christian. So some people ask me if there are victims how come no one or very few are speaking up and I'll I'll give I'll give examples the shaming the shunning the rejection not being listened to uh, being told you're a liar being told that those who victimized you either priests or even people in the parishes that they couldn't do that they couldn't do those things that I'm making it up. So there are several reasons why people don't speak up. And that's why I was silent for such a long time because people don't believe. People don't want to believe. And then I want, I ask the question, is it truly Christian? Is it truly Christ-like to silence victims of abuse? So I don't know my Bible through and through, but no matter what I say, uh, people will say something like, oh, in the Bible it says this, or Jesus says you have to carry your cross. And, and I get it. But even though I know the Bible, you know, so-so, I'm not trying to preach here, but there is a parable in which Jesus talks about the Good Samaritan. So if you're not familiar with uh, this parable, let me quickly uh, explain it. So in this parable, Jesus is talking about this this guy who's walking on the road and he gets beaten up and robbed of what he has. And then he's lying there on the road. And those who pass him by are supposed to be people of the faith. And they look at him and they move on. And then, a, so two people pass him by who are supposed to be of the faith. And then a third person passes him by who is a Samaritan, who is a foreigner. And this person who should look at at this person, so this Samaritan who is passing by, it would be more expected of him 
to pass by and, and not do anything. But instead, this Samaritan goes to the victim, helps the victim up, helps, you know, clean the wounds, helps the person to heal, and even comes back to check on the person. Now, I find that gospel parable to be so powerful because today, who are the people passing by? Victims are people from the church, people who claim to follow Christ. And yet when someone is in pain or hurt and wounded, what do they get? They get humiliations. They get rejected. They get hate just by sharing, just for sharing their pain. And so in my case, you know, I'm still Catholic. I, I love my faith. However, there is this maliciousness by some Christians, by some Catholics, who they have this us versus them mentality, and it's tearing apart people. And the thing with me is that I did ask for help. I did ask for guidance. I did ask to be heard. And instead, I was called an asshole. I was called this, I was called this and that. And it was so painful because I was trying to genuinely have healing with my abusers, have healing with those who neglected me, with those who punished me. And for reaching out, I was beaten more and more. And like, like in the parable, they just pass them by. And that's what's happening in the church. People are passing you by and they're doing that, that cult-like stuff. They look, they shame, and then they have that us versus them mentality. Oh, you know, look, look at him. So in the, in the gospel, the Samaritan is the one who helped this, this person who was so broken. And today in, in my story, in my life, I'm experiencing healing through people who are atheists, people who are not Catholic, people who are willing to sit down have a real discussion, and sometimes they're homosexual. It, it's all walks of life. Every person has dignity, has something beautiful about them, even the atheist. And the idea before was, oh, you're going to talk to an atheist? Oh, or you're going to talk to a homosexual? Or, oh, you're going to talk to that? And it's so painful because I, I had this mentality, I had this idea that the people in the church, the people in my community or in the parishes, that they were going to help me in healing. But instead, they contributed to the pain, the suffering, the trauma by, again, like I said, so much shaming, so much neglect. And if you claim to be a Christian and you see victims of abuse and you're telling them to shut up about their story, you are like, in the, in the parable of the Good Samaritan, the ones who are just passing by, making sure that they don't speak. You, you want the person to remain wounded. You want the person to remain broken. And I didn't give up, and I'm still not giving up. But let me, let me tell you this. Some of the most Christ-like people whom I've come across are people who weren't even followers of Christ. Now, that should say a lot because... If you believe in the gospel, if you believe in Christ, if you believe in mercy, compassion, start applying it to those who are in your communities, who are in your family homes. Because I know like in Jehovah Witnesses, there's so much shaming, so much shunning. And But yet, look at this parable, the Good Samaritan, how when someone is hurt, you don't go and stomp on them, you don't go and beat them up, you don't go and add to their wounds, you go and try to understand, try to heal, try to love. And sometimes we're not always going to meet eye to eye, but I think that it is more Christ-like, it is definitely more Christ-like to have mercy, compassion, than to want to beat down someone who is already hurt.